Okay guys, welcome to another dagger tutorial. Um, last time we covered qualifiers and I mentioned we're going to do cross scoping, which is what we're going to do now. So it's not really cross scoping, it's actually handling multiple components at different levels of your application. So this is a very typical situation, okay? You'll notice that all the stuff we've created, all our networking classes, all our modules, everything here, these are all application level dependencies, which mean they're all created at the application level. The problem is some dependencies are at the activity level. So when you're doing Android, as you know, the activity has a different life cycle to the application, which means that anything that's created within the activity needs to be destroyed with the activity as well. So here is an example. Now the problem is we have uh, some things in here that we want to create. Uh, we want to use Dagger to do some injecting. So ideally we'd like to, let's say create our adapter, create our GitHub service and our Picasso and we'll do that here. Okay, so we're gonna create a new, um, a new dagger setup so a new component and a new module for this activity okay and then we'll talk about how to connect one component to another and make things behave correctly across different life cycles so we're going to go through all of this nonsense again the one thing dagger is good at is class creation so we're going to create our home activity component and a general rule of thumb here is we're going to annotate that component. Uh, a general rule of thumb with this kind of stuff is uh, if something has a different life cycle to something else, so for example, fragments have different life cycles to each other and our activity parent, services don't act in the same way as activities, a application don't have the same, have a different life cycle as well. If they have different life cycles, they should have their own component if you're using Dagger within them. Uh, this prevents a lot of problems. Sorry, just yawning. This will prevent uh, a lot of problems down the line. Because if you have something that's being created and held at the application level, but needs to live and die with the activity scope or the activity lifecycle, things just start flying off the handle. So we're going to create our home activity module. We're going to create our app module. I said we're going to create the adapter. So we're going to just say uh, at provides uh, public, you know, this all is a boilerplate. Uh, adapter repos and then method, I generally just call it the same thing because some people call their methods at provides or whatever. I'm not a fan of that. Now, one thing to note is we're going to return new adapter repos and we're going to need a context. Now the context in this case is an activity. So we need to give the home activity module an actual activity instance to work with. This is the exact same situation as we had before with the context module and the application context. So let's create a private final home activity. Add our constructor parameter. So now we have our home activity here like this. And we need a Picasso instance, so we'll add it as an argument. Since Picasso is already part of our Dagger system, Dagger should pick it up and do this. That's great. Now, with this system, we only want to create one component in implementation or instance per activity. So in our on create, we want to just say Dagger activity component dot build and get our um, flip get our uh, uh, adapter instance out of it bit of a catch though we don't want to uh, have the scoping problem as before so we want to have a scope the problem is if we use the same scope as the application level dagger will get confused so we're going to create a new scope. We're going to create a home activity scope. Uh, 
I'm going to annotate this with ash scope. That'll actually error because this isn't in that interface. And then we're going to annotate our provides with at home activity scope and we need to annotate our component. If we don't annotate the component, Dagger will say it'll give you an error. And then we say modules equals home activity module dot class. Great. I'm actually going to move that line up. Okay, that's really good. And then we need to have the publicly accessible part, so which is our adapter repos. Okay, so this is what we want from our component. The exact same we have the application the way we want in our application component, we want Picasso and our GitHub service. Inside our activity component, we want our adapter to come out of it. So that's what we want the graph to generate. Brilliant. So inside our home activity, we can just simply, uh, we can say uh, dagger, Okay, we need to compile first because we need to tell Dagger to generate the classes. So we hit the hammer and under Studio 2.2. Now, Dagger's yelling. Oh no! Picasso cannot be provided without an inject constructor or from an at provides annotated method. So this is telling us our adapter repos is full of holes. This Picasso instance is not linking to our, our application level. So the problem is there's no way for Dagger to connect two components together. It doesn't understand that. So what we need to do is we need to tell Dagger to use the application component, the, G the GitHub application component as a source of dependencies inside this component. So this is what allows you to connect one component to another. And this is very important. So up here on our, our component annotation, there's modules equals home activity module. This is where we'll do it. So this tells our component, hey, use the home activity module when you're searching for dependencies. We can also say dependencies equals uh, GitHub application component dot class. This basically tells Dagger when you're looking for the dependencies that this, when you're trying to create this and you're missing dependencies, look inside this component. And if we look at our component, we are providing the Picasso instance. So now if we build, it works. Brilliant. So if we take a look at our, we'll create our thing now. So we'll say dagger, home activity component dot builder. Now you'll notice that there's two methods in here. There's home activity module, which we've already seen for modules. Home activity module, and then we need the home activity, which is this. So we're providing the ex external dependencies that it needs, the activity in this case, into it. Dot GitHub application component. This is where we need to basically join the two together manually. The problem is that, that the application component has a different life cycle to the activity component. So we need to basically talk to the GitHub application class or instance and say, get the application component, use that to create our dependencies. And then at the end of the activity, when the activity is destroyed, it will just disappear. So we need to get access to that component. So in our GitHub application, we already had access to these GitHub service and Picasso methods. So what we can actually do now is we can just create a new method, uh, public application component, component. And this here, we're going to create a field. Nope. There we go. So we're going to create a component and then we're going to just return it. Aces. So now in this here, we can just say GitHub application dot get this just a little static accessor method dot component dot build, and then we just say dagger or our home activity component here. Perfect. 
and then we can just say dot equals component dot adapter repos. So what we have essentially done there is we've connected our application level components. So we've got this basically a block of dependencies for the application that can talk to the um that can talk directly to our activity level dependencies so our networking clients or services all that good stuff and pull those in as needed this is very useful so this allows you to separate your dependencies according to their life cycles so for example if you've got a service that has a music player that only exists for the duration of the service but needs to talk to your network clients if you've got an activity which needs to download information using a network client, you can put the network client inside your application class, and then you can put your uh, home activity or your activity level dependencies inside your activity components, put your service stuff inside your service components and, ha and link them all together with a really neat system. The thing is we have this adapter repos here, okay? Who said we can't have this doing the GitHub service. We can actually just directly connect the GitHub service as well. So this means that we can just say our GitHub service is here as well. Which means we can get rid of these two methods. And now our application, if we get rid of this, whoops, now our application has a single method for the component which provides all of the all the dependencies so we don't need a big mountain of dependencies this is an unused field so we're compacting our code down a little bit here but now with this dagger system everything's cleaned up or the vast majority of this is cleaned up all our dependencies are being managed away from our application so we don't need to spend ages initializing everything and that's basically across scope home activity scope home activity scope talking to the application scope two different life cycles two different scopes two different components working together and that's where dagger 2 really starts to shine with android because it makes things like this very easy uh, a lot of examples you'll find will use subcomponents. i'm not going to cover those because i don't get them and personally i don't find any use for them i don't like them at all i hate them to be honest uh, I find using separate components and joining them together correctly using dependencies inside a component is much better than using um, subcomponents. Uh, this also allows you, if you're using MVP, for example, or when I go to make my video series on Oryx MVP, we'll be using uh, multiple components like this as well. So we'll have our home activity, which will be inject, which will be creating our view model and presenter for us with the model communicating with the activity level uh, or the application level and it works out really well. But this is essentially this. Job done. It's much simpler, isn't it? Uh, so that's it for this video, guys. The next video, we're gonna talk about the at inject annotation and shortcuts in creating your uh, dependencies. So that's it, guys. Uh, see you next time.